Carlos Sainz Jr.'s move to Ferrari in 2021 will see him joining fellow young driver Charles Leclerc at the legendary Formula One team. It was seen as the next big step in the talented Spaniard's career. The move from Renault to McLaren resulted in a first career podium, and the call to Ferrari this offseason was seen as the no-brainer move towards upward progression through the ranks of F1 to one of the sport's top teams. However, the 2020 season has seen a shocking decline of the Ferrari pace, an ungraceful plummet to the midfield that stunned the Formula One world. Now the question of if Carlos Sainz might regret his move to Ferrari is being asked across the F1 world. Team conflicts and questionable race strategies, along with on-track incidents between drivers, has added to the drama inside of the Ferrari camp. The ongoing saga of Sebastian Vettel's ugly divorce from Ferrari has highlighted the team's struggles and left everyone in that garage searching for answers. During the Belgium GP, even Carlos Sainz himself showed concern of what was unfolding. Through seven races, his current team of McLaren has led Ferrari in the constructor standings every week. Adding insult to injury, his former team of Renault is looking poised to pass Ferrari soon after closing the gap on the back of outstanding performances from Daniel Ricciardo and a much improved Esteban Ocon. Let's take a closer look at the numbers to see if Ferrari next year really may be career suicide for Carlos Sainz Jr. So let's take a look at the numbers of Carlos Sainz Jr. versus Ferrari this year. That's what I have on this side of the board, Vettel and Leclerc versus Carlos's performances. On this side, I decided to take a look at Ferrari, McLaren, and Renault race by race in the 2020 season to see, is this something that Carlos should be really, really panicking about going into the 2021 season? Or maybe the numbers aren't as bad as they, they might seem from the outside looking in. So let's start on this side of the board. We'll start in Austria. There are two back-to-back -back Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz gets a P5 and a P9. Vettel has a P10 in a retirement, so Vettel has two really bad races to start the year. I think that, you know, that kind of amplified what's going on with Sebastian Vettel now. Charles Leclerc, though, after Ferrari's bad speed, still manages to finish P2. He podiums in his very first race. Ferrari may be looking at it saying, hey, it's not as bad as it looks. But, of course, he gets into Vettel in the second race in Austria, and both Ferraris retire. And Sebastian Vettel winds up outperforming the Ferrari three of the four, you know, comparisons here. So he outperforms Vettel twice and Leclerc once. But Leclerc podiums. In Hungary, he finishes P9. Vettel outperforms him, finishing P6. But he does outperform Leclerc. So, once again, he beats one Ferrari, doesn't beat another. In Great Britain, he finishes P13 and gets outperformed by both Ferraris. One of the Ferraris, Charles Leclerc, podiums for a second time this season. So through the first four races, I don't think you can say that McLaren has been significantly better. Well, Carlos Sainz has not been significantly better than the Ferraris. So it's still maybe an upward progression, a move to Ferrari at this point. By the time we get to the 70th anniversary, for a second straight week, he's outperformed by both Ferrari drivers. Vettel and Charles Leclerc both finish ahead of Carlos Sainz. Then we get to Spain, and Carlos Sainz always performs pretty well in Spain, in my opinion, and he does get a P6 here, beats Sebastian Vettel by one spot, and of course, Leclerc has a retirement in that event. Then we get to Belgium, and of course, Carlos Sainz never gets a chance to race in this race, gets a DNS, something goes wrong mechanically in that car before he even get, can even get to the lineup on the grid. No race for him. And Ferrari completely flops himself. I think it's probably safe to say that had he been in this event, he probably would have beat the two Ferraris. This was the worst week I've seen Ferrari. I think this was even worse than the double retirement week. They looked super slow. Who knows where they would have ended up. You know, they, they had a lot more pace in Austria is my point. But when it's all said and done through these seven races, he beat both Ferrari drivers two times out of seven races. And he beat at least one Ferrari driver four times out of seven races. So he's kind of right in the mix with them at this point, but it is really noticeable that Ferrari still podium twice this year. All right, sorry for the edit in the middle of that. I had to change camera uh, angles because it fell. So let's move to this side of the board. We got Ferrari, McLaren, and Renault, the team comparison. Week number one, McLaren wins it. 26 points to 19 points by Ferrari, four for Renault. Week number two, same story. 
13 points to no points for Ferrari, four points for, for Renault again. And McLaren records a fastest lap, something that I don't think we're going to see from Ferrari at all in the 2020 season. We'd all be shocked if we did at this point with their pace. But McLaren does get a fastest lap, and Carlos is the one to do it. In week three, Ferrari finally wins a week. All three teams don't really perform that well. Renault stays consistent with their four points. Uh, McLaren has a bad week with only two points, and you know Ferrari has eight points, which by 2020 standards, I guess, is good for them. But overall, that's a pretty bad week for Ferrari too, and their you know from their expectations. Great Britain, Ferrari has their best week of the year so far, 16 points. Which again, going back to a year ago, if you said that was their best week of the year so far, you would not believe it. But there it is. McLaren comes in with 10 points. Renault has an insane week in Great Britain, 20 points at that race. So they take it down there. But Ferrari does beat McLaren. 70th anniversary Grand Prix. We once again have Ferrari winning the week. They get 12 points versus McLaren's 2 points. And Renault's four points, so Ferrari taking it down again. When we get to Spain, Ferrari only gets six. McLaren gets nine. Renault has a big donut hole there with zero, so McLaren goes back to beating Ferrari. And this week in Belgium, a disastrous week for Ferrari. Their pace looked awful, and this wasn't a, a situation like up here where we had two retirements for Ferrari. We just had two slow cars and two drivers that couldn't do anything with them. McLaren records six points, of course, in this Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz doesn't even get a chance to get on track. Mechanical failure results in a did not start for him. And Renault has the most impressive weekend, in my opinion, for them in about two or three years. 23 points and a fastest lap for Daniel Ricciardo. So when you look at this in the context of 2020, there is... A little bit of, of give or take with these teams. There's not a huge difference between Ferrari, McLaren, and Renault. So from that standpoint, you might look at this and say, Carlos Sainz Jr. is better off, you know, staying at, at Ferrari, but there are some advantages maybe, or sorry, staying at McLaren, but there are some advantages to moving to Ferrari. Ferrari has podiumed twice this year, even with their slow speed, which is actually pretty impressive, uh, especially when you watch some of these last couple of weeks. Uh, the fact that you look at a race like the Belgium Grand Prix and say, hey, Ferrari's podium twice this year, it's almost baffling. But here's where how I look at this on this board right now. This is Ferrari we're talking about. Like I said in my intro, this was supposed to be the move from the midfield up to one of the top three teams in Formula One. The move that was going to allow Carlos Sainz Jr. a chance to win, you know, one or two or three Grand Prix a year. Maybe playing second fiddle to Shaw Claire a little bit, but he's going to be in that top four, top five driver standings every single season at Ferrari. And, you know, maybe be at worst a Kimi Raikkonen that wins a year, you know, one race in 2018, but is up there all time, or at best battling for wins every single week. And instead, what you see here with Ferrari right now is they are battling in the midfield with the likes of McLaren and Renault. The difference is that these two teams are on the upward swing, they're getting better and better. Renault looks like they are definitely on the upswing over the last, you know, four or five Grand Prix on average. McLaren, uh, overall, in the last two years, keeps getting better and better and better. And next year, Renault's going to have Fernando Alonso back in the lineup. So that, that may improve them. It may not. I don't know. But the bottom line is, not only is Ferrari battling these teams, they're losing these battles on many of the weeks to these teams. So... Is this a situation where Carlos Sainz is taking a look at this and saying, hey, I would have been better off staying at McLaren. I'd even be better off at Renault, maybe. Or at the very least, it doesn't really make a difference compared to what Ferrari is. It's not what he signed up for. What he signed up for was to be for one of the top teams in all of Formula One. And right now in 2020, he's looking at it and saying, where I am is as good or better than where I'm going. So definitely cause for concern. But is it career suicide? Let's move on to the next part of the video where I tell you why I don't think it is. Ferrari's struggles are amplified by their history of success in Formula One. The media loves to talk about how slow Ferrari is, and that comes with being one of the greatest teams in the history of the sport. But even with all the struggles they've had in 2020, there are still reasons why I don't think this is career suicide for Carlos Sainz Jr. For one, they've already managed a podium this year with having some of the worst cars we've ever seen Ferrari have. I think with two young drivers like Carlos Sainz Jr. and Charles Leclerc, the future of Ferrari can still be bright, especially once we move to the brand new cars in 2022. The real concern is just next season, 
where they're going to be running similar packages to what they're running in 2020. But after that, I think the sky is the limit for Ferrari once again. As always, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.